what's on the agenda for Flight 6? The flight timeline has been released, revealing a significant update, a new heat shield marking a major milestone for the future of Starship. Meanwhile, any health concerns for the Starliner astronauts have been cleared, with their health officially confirmed as stable. If you're ready, let's dive into all this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. As we mentioned in the last episode, Flight 6 is now right around the corner. True to earlier predictions, this upcoming flight will feature significant updates in Starship's progress, including a crucial new task, reigniting the engine in space, a test essential for future missions involving orbital refueling and long-range trips to the moon, Mars, and beyond. But that's not all. There's an equally critical aspect being tested this time. S-31's heat shields won't be fully installed. According to SpaceX, several thermal protection experiments and operational changes will test the limits of Starship's capabilities and generate flight data to inform plans for ship, catch, and reuse. The heat shield configuration on this flight is a major shift, and SpaceX will use it to assess new secondary thermal protection materials. Notably, entire sections of heat shield tiles have been intentionally left off on both sides of the ship in key areas under study for catch-enabling hardware on future vehicles. These tile-free areas are located around the forward flap, where images show the heat shield absent near the body's connection to the flap. This change could support new catch hardware, possibly functioning similarly to a lifting point as a primary or secondary support for the catch process. Imagine a foldable system that could flexibly open and close, simplifying integration with the chopsticks for a smoother and more secure catch maneuver. SpaceX has hinted that there could be additional zones with similar configurations, possibly further down the ship. It's a fascinating setup that may provide essential insights into materials and designs for future fully reusable Starships. As SpaceX continues to refine Starship, these tests will help shape the path to reliable reusability and frequent cost-effective launches. With these enhancements, SpaceX is moving closer to achieving a rapid, reusable launch system. But this mission is also a giant leap forward for gathering data, advancing heat shield technology, and perfecting the catch mechanics that will eventually bring Starship back to land ready for a quick turnaround. What might these new configurations mean for future missions? Could other sections of the ship eventually see similar designs? Feel free to share your theories in the comments section down below. By removing sections of the heat shield, SpaceX can achieve multiple testing objectives. First, it will evaluate the performance of the ablative layer, introduced on Flight 5, which Elon Musk has said could make the heat shield twice as robust. Additionally, exposing these areas to re-entry conditions without heat shields will reveal their durability. SpaceX notes that if these sections are used in the catching system, they'll be unshielded, making this test essential for refining the new system's design and integration. SpaceX also mentioned a modification to the landing approach, specifically adjusting the landing angle with a steeper angle of attack. This requires a higher load on the flap systems, pushing them to new limits. Data gathered here will inform future landing configurations. Another advantage of this flight is the timing. It's scheduled for late afternoon at Starbase, which means the ship's landing trajectory will occur in daylight over the Indian Ocean. This will provide a clearer view of the descent path, though it may diminish the visual impact of the plasma effect during re-entry, which is usually more striking against a night sky. As Flight 6 approaches, SpaceX has ramped up preparations. A new road closure schedule has been issued to support the rollout, November 11th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m and November 12th from 10 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon for moving Booster 13 to the launch site. Following a few weeks of static fire testing, critical systems like the engines, chains, and grid fins are expected to be fully checked. This rollout might also feature hot staging. Once Booster 13 is in place, Ship 31 will likely follow soon after, ready for pre-flight integration and final heat shield adjustments. Preparations are well underway for the world to witness the next Starship flight, featuring some thrilling changes and exciting milestones. Type in I'm ready in the comments section if you're gearing up for this mission. And don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel for ongoing updates on SpaceX's progress. SpaceX has also updated the flight sequence for Flight 6, though the overall steps and timing closely follow those from Flight 5. Before liftoff, the SpaceX flight director will conduct a thorough systems poll and confirm a go for propellant loading at T-1 hour and 15 minutes. 
Methane fuel loading will start at T minus 49 minutes and 50 seconds, followed by the engine chill at T minus 19 minutes and 40 seconds, ensuring that the engines are at the right temperature for optimal performance. Propellant loading for both the ship and booster will complete at T minus 3 minutes and 20 seconds and T minus 2 minutes and 50 seconds, respectively, with the final go for launch being verified just 30 seconds before liftoff. As a minor change for Flight 6, SpaceX has opted to begin liquid oxygen loading on the ship and fuel loading on the Super Heavy earlier than in previous flights. This change will not drastically impact the timeline, but reflects continued fine-tuning of the pre-launch sequence. As the countdown continues, 10 seconds before liftoff, the flame deflector system will engage to direct the intense heat and force of the engines away from the launch pad. The engines will ignite precisely 3 seconds before launch, setting the stage for another powerful liftoff. The changes to the launch sequence are minor, but they highlight SpaceX's ongoing refinement of its systems and procedures. The major addition to Flight 6 is the long-anticipated Raptor in-space relight demonstration. Scheduled for T plus 37 minutes and 46 seconds, this critical milestone will occur roughly 10 minutes before Starship's re-entry, providing a unique opportunity to observe the ignition of Raptor engines in space. If SpaceX is able to provide camera views, this moment could stand out as one of the most exciting of the mission, demonstrating Starship's readiness for orbital maneuvers. The success of this test is pivotal, as it will enable future missions where Starship must perform in-orbit maneuvers such as returning to Starbase, launching payloads, developing an in-orbit refueling system, and eventually journeying beyond Earth's orbit to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. After liftoff, the sequence will closely mirror Flight 5 with slight timing adjustments. Starship will reach max Q at T plus 1 minute and 2 seconds, and Super Heavy will experience Mecho at T plus 2 minutes, 32 seconds. Booster separation will occur at T plus 2 minutes and 39 seconds, using hot staging, followed by a boost back burn at T plus 2 minutes and 44 seconds, finishing at T plus 3 minutes and 38 seconds. At T plus 3 minutes and 40 seconds, the hot staging jettison will allow Starship to continue. By T plus 6 minutes and 25 seconds, Super Heavy will reach transonic speeds and begin the landing burn at T plus 6 minutes and 38 seconds, with engine shut down at around the 7 minute mark. For Starship, after stage separation, the engines will continue firing until T plus 8 minutes and 27 seconds, when they will shut down. Starship will coast for 30 minutes, then perform the crucial in-space engine relight at T plus 37 minutes and 46 seconds, a key test for future missions. Starship's reentry will begin at T plus 47 minutes and 13 seconds, lasting 15 minutes as it tests new heat shield modifications. At T plus 1 hour, 2 minutes and 6 seconds, it will reach transonic speeds, followed by subsonic at T plus 1 hour, 3 minutes and 12 seconds, before executing a landing flip at T plus 1 hour, 4 minutes and 56 seconds. The landing burn will start at T plus 1 hour, 5 minutes and 1 second, leading to a controlled vertical touchdown at T plus 1 hour, 5 minutes and 24 seconds in the Indian Ocean. The daytime landing will be clearly visible, offering a thrilling moment. Flight 6 is set to showcase key milestones, including the Raptor in-space relight, heat shield tests, and landing sequence, all critical for Starship's future missions. Stay tuned for this historic flight. Now, let's turn to NASA's updates on ISS astronaut health, specifically regarding SUNY Williams. Recently, media outlets like the Daily Mail and the New York Post stirred speculation about the health of NASA astronaut Suni Williams on the ISS, referencing a September 24th photo in which Williams appears gaunt, according to an external doctor's assessment. However, NASA quickly responded with a November 7th statement dismissing these concerns. The agency confirmed that Williams, who commands Expedition 72, is in good health and that they are not tracking any concerns, with her or any of the other seven crew members aboard, which includes four NASA astronauts and three Russian cosmonauts. NASA reassured the public that all astronauts on the ISS, including Williams, undergo routine medical evaluations, have dedicated flight surgeons for monitoring, and are in good health overall. Williams and her fellow astronaut Butch Wilmore initially arrived at the ISS on June 6th via Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, intending for a brief one-week stay. However, a malfunction in Starliner's thruster system extended their mission, leading NASA to bring the Starliner back uncrewed on September 6th. 
Williams and Wilmore will now remain aboard until February of 2025, at which point they will return alongside SpaceX's Crew-9 astronauts. NASA confirmed that the ISS has an ample supply of provisions for the crew, largely due to recent resupply missions, including the CRS-31 mission. With all essential needs met, the crew is set to complete their mission objectives and return home early next year. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.